was a shock uh, with what happened, and it was it was pretty bad. Next on Action News, the mark of a Valley rivalry that could land some students in serious trouble. Plus, new details in a teacher sex case could mean a big punishment and trouble for Fresno Unified as well. And a triumphant return, a big day this weekend for the big cats who had to leave Cat Haven because of the rough fire. Action News AM Live Saturday starts now. Number one in Central California, this is ABC 30 Action News AM Live. Good morning, Central Valley. You're looking live from our Fresno Pacific University North Fresno Campus Sky Camp. Still dark out there on Highway 41 and Friant Road, but you see a few cars out on the road getting an early start to this Saturday morning. I'm Corin Hoggard, and we're going to get an early start with Ruben Contreras for a first check of a forecast that a little bit warmer, maybe some rain in the future. Developing news now out of Northwest Fresno. Police are looking for the gunman who injured two people at a candlelight vigil for two murder victims. People gathered last night outside the apartment complex where Willie and Denzel Ford were killed the day before. Police arrested Dominic Greenberry for their murders. Officers are now trying to determine if last night's shooting is connected. A high school rivalry game turned ugly even before it started when vandals defaced the football field in Reedley. As Joey Barra reports, officers have an idea who might be responsible for the vandalism, and whoever it is could be facing felony charges. A young boy is recovering in the hospital this morning after being shot while riding his bike. He was hit just before 6 p.m. near McNally Memorial Park in Madera. So far, police are not releasing any information about a possible suspect. That little boy is expected to be okay. In the South Valley, a big dent in drug operations after a bust in Tulare County. Take a look at the stash investigators seized when they served a search warrant in early March. They found about 33 pounds of methamphetamine, five pounds of heroin, and nearly $30,000 in cash. Officers located most of the contraband in a bedroom along with a loaded gun. They arrested Maria Contreras, who now faces multiple drug charges. An Action News investigation has uncovered new details in the case of the Fresno High School teacher accused of having a long, inappropriate relationship with a student, and they could expose Fresno Unified to a lawsuit. Police arrested 46-year-old Darren Klassen last week, and I've uncovered search warrants with accusations that could land Klassen in prison for a long time. Darren Klassen's arrest shocked the Fresno High School community, teachers and students alike. The details revealed in a series of search warrants make the alleged crime even more troubling. Police say the sex acts took place in Klassen's classroom, room N15. The fact that it's in school, that's disturbing just as, as an individual looking at it. The alleged victim told police the relationship got physical when she was still 15, but it escalated in the month she turned 16. She said they had sexual contact three to five times a week into her junior year, and the activity continued even after she graduated. Police say Klassen admitted many of the details in a phone call they recorded. Legal analyst Ralph Torres says, that spells serious trouble. Every event can be a charged crime. So if you have three to five times a week, uh, every week, multiply that out, we're looking at hundreds of counts. The girl told police this is the scene of the crimes. This building right here, and you'll notice there is not a single window to the outside in this building. Students tell me there is one small window in the hallway, but it's often covered with a single piece of paper. Possible liability for the school district, um, that's there. Also, you know, the fact that it happened, um, if you believe it, every single week for, um, for a year, let's say, um, you would expect that somebody suspected. When a second grade teacher in Clovis Unified molested a student, the district paid the victim's family more than $2 million. It also installed classroom doors with bigger windows to eliminate privacy. Fresno Unified didn't comment about the possible liability, but they told me they put Klassen on leave and they are working with police. I also talked to Klassen's attorney who told me he didn't want to comment on the case beyond saying he is still investigating what happened. The popular sanctuary for exotic cats along Highway 180 is scheduled to reopen this weekend. Project Survival's Cat Haven voluntarily closed last month because of the threat of the rough fire, which is now 87% contained after burning more than 151,000 acres. As a precaution, Cat Haven sent three bobcats to Fresno's Chaffee Zoo. 
Some of the bigger animals were housed in other parts of the state. They're all back now, and they can be seen starting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Coming up, a drought demand. A Fresno County shantytown stands as a symbol of the trouble some blame on political policy. Coming up next, a major dust-up for Fresno Unified. You're the um. superintendent of a public institution. What's the need for secret messaging? We go directly to Michael Hansen for answers about the new controversy that has some calling for him to step down. Plus, a hero story emerges from the heartbreak in Oregon as we learn more about the victims of Thursday's mass shooting. Get a load of this. A lucky movie fan now has a piece of Star Wars history. That's it. The iconic bikini worn by Princess Leia in Return of the Jedi sold for a whopping $96,000 during an online auction Friday. A costume famously worn by Carrie Fisher in the film as she was held prisoner by Jabba the Hutt. Winning bidder? Not named. That is going to be one very expensive Halloween costume. And we'll say that the uh, rainfall here in the Central Valley has been skimpy, kind of like yeah. that outfit. But we have some <laughs> storms making their way through the valley today. Hundreds of people kicked off their weekend by running to help families in need. Crossing the finish line there is the Pavarello House hosted the Run for Meals 5K and two-mile walk at Woodward Park yesterday. Some of the runners and walkers got dressed up in real fun costumes for that third annual event. Proceeds will help the Pavarello House pay for services for the poor, the hungry, and the homeless. ABC 30 was a proud sponsor of the event, and sports anchor Chris Alvarez served as the MC. You might be able to help if you have an elderly relative targeted by a lottery sweepstakes scheme. In this morning's Safe from Scams report, Action News anchor Jason Oliveira shows us one woman who came up with a number of ways. To... Next on Action News, taking back the streets. Police now stepping up patrols, but a third shooting may be connected to a double murder. Plus a bicyclist hit and killed on a Fresno County road why the driver may not face any charges. And why the rough fire will keep a part of Kings Canyon National Park closed for several more months at the least. Action News AM Live Sunday starts now. Number one in Central California, this is ABC 30 Action News AM Live. Good morning, Central Valley. You're taking a live look from our Fresno Pacific University North Fresno Campus Sky Camp. Some clouds up there, little blue sky trying to peek through. I'm Corin Hoggard, and we are tracking a thunderstorm making its way across the valley this morning. We just heard rain on the roof of our studios. We caught a few lightning strikes. You see them up there in the upper right-hand corner of that downtown Fresno Sky Cam. That was from around 6 a.m. Ruben Contreras is here monitoring the storms, and he's got an AccuWeather forecast that's a little unstable this morning. New this morning, fire destroyed a southeast Fresno duplex just a few hours ago. In this video I took, you can see there's a roof on the ground there. That's all that's left of one home. Firefighters say that home was empty and nobody in the other unit got hurt. They kept the flames from spreading to duplexes right next door, but one family is now homeless and the damage could approach half a million dollars. It's too early to know what caused that fire. Another 10 people are looking for new homes after a fire destroyed two duplexes in northeast Fresno. That fire broke out around 3.30 yesterday afternoon. First responders say the fire started on the patio of one unit and quickly spread to the place next door. Firefighters put out the flames in about 15 minutes thanks to smoke detectors inside the duplexes. It looks as if because we had an early notification, we're able to get a, get a, a quick handle uh, on this fire. The cause of that fire, still under investigation also. The rough fire will keep a popular part of Kings Canyon National Park closed until at least next year. Park officials announced yesterday they hope to reopen Cedar Grove in 2016. But they say the area is prone to rock falls and there's still active fire on the ridges, plus fire crews working in the area. So the closure will stay in place for now to protect the public and staff members. But later this morning, Project Survival's Cat Haven is expected to reopen after those large cats were evacuated last month. They did a private twilight tour last night and they are ready to go today. The rough fire has burned more than 151,000 acres since July 31st. It's now 87% contained. A developing news this morning. Police are investigating a shooting late last night in West Central Fresno. Officers say the victim took a bullet to the thigh and should be able to recover. 
They're concerned that shooting may be related to two murders and another shooting in the last two days. The police department is stepping up patrols after the second of those shootings. The gunman hit a boy and a sister to the murder victims during a vigil for Willie and Denzel Ford on Friday night. Action News reporter Veronica Miracle shows us how officers are trying to stop the violence. A bicyclist is dead after an SUV hit him on a dark Fresno County road. The victim was riding his bike near Central and Cherry just after 8 o'clock last night. CHP officers say he was on the roadway heading south when the SUV came up behind him and knocked him down. The only way I think this uh, accident could have been avoided is if the uh, bicyclist was completely off the paved portion of the roadway and on the, the dirt shoulder. Officers say the cyclist did not have any lights or reflective gear on the bike, which made it very hard to see him. The SUV driver cooperated with investigators, and the CHP does not intend to file charges. In the South Valley, detectives are investigating a murder in Tulare. Police say someone spotted a man on the ground bleeding yesterday afternoon near the Tulare Historical Museum. The victim was unresponsive when emergency crews arrived. They tried to revive him, but he died at the scene. Police are still interviewing witnesses, and they have not released a cause of death. In Orange Cove, police are looking for a suspect who shot a young man. Happened around 5 last night outside the victim's home. He was flown to Community Regional Medical Center with a few gunshot wounds to the chest. But despite those injuries, investigators say that man is expected to survive. As of this time, we don't know if it's gang related, um, but we're not uh, ruling that, that possibility out. Officers say they are following several leads, but they are not giving out a description of the suspect. Four teenagers are in custody accused of plotting a school shooting in Tuolumne County. Administrators at Somerville High School contacted police Wednesday about three students who were making threats against other students and faculty. They investigated and found a fourth student was involved in the plan. The suspect's plans was very detailed in nature and included names of would-be victims, locations, methods in which the plan was to be carried out. The thought about my daughter being on that list makes me sick. Do I want to know? I don't know. Police arrested the four students at their homes Friday on conspiracy charges. They didn't find any weapons, but officers say those students were in the process of trying to get some to carry out the attack. The investigation started just one day before the mass shooting at a community college in Oregon. A cheaper travel option may be getting more expensive. Up next, Amtrak follows suit with new fees many airlines now charge. Also ahead, physician, heal thyself. A diabetic doctor working on a new substitute for daily insulin. Brian Cooks told me the new evidence makes him think he didn't kill Janessa, but he still wanted her family to know he is sorry for whatever role he played in her death. Brian Cooks is the poster boy in the movement to get justice for Janessa. Police say the convicted felon fired one shot, accidentally killing the nine-year-old girl. Investigators say Cooks confessed when he learned Janessa's mother had forgiven the killers. Eight months later, in a phone interview from jail, he told me that mercy still means a lot. I just uh, want to say sorry to the family, you know, and and and, and I, I really I really appreciate that they that they that they forgave forgave me, you know, if if I did or if I didn't do it. Cooks made no confessions Wednesday. In fact, he pointed to new ballistics testing as evidence he might not have killed Janessa. It was inconclusive as to whether the bullet actually came from his gun. With that testing done and if it was tied in, it would have been pretty much open and shut for the prosecution. But now this opens the door for the defense to argue it wasn't me who did it. ABC 30 legal analyst Tony Capozzi says other evidence still makes this a strong case against Cooks. Search warrants I uncovered show Cooks fired in the direction of the laundromat where Janessa was standing with her mother. But police also believe Dante Hawkins fired four times at Cooks first, away from the girl. But investigators said Cooks' gun jammed after he fired one shot. And witnesses describe a sixth shot, also in Janessa's direction, one that may have struck the sign for this Indian food and spices store. And yet, neither Hawkins nor his alleged driver, Isaac Stafford, are charged in this case. Only Cooks. The fingers just all getting pointed at me, you know, and I, I'm not the only one. You know, I take responsibilities for the actions that I took. But at the same time, at the end of the day, you know, I shouldn't have to take full responsibilities for everyone's actions. 
Now, Hawkins is in jail, though. A month after police released him on Janessa's case without any charges, they arrested him for attempted murder in another case. Cooks wonders if the gun used in that crime could be tied to Janessa's killing. I also reached out to Janessa's family today. Her grandmother told me she planned to pray about the new information. Corn Hawker at ABC 30 Action News. Yeah, Liz, coroners have just arrived on the scene here right now. We see their van right here on the west side of the road, which is where the shootout started, as I said, about six hours ago in this busy street. It also extended off over to the east side of the street. You can see some bullet holes in a gray car right over here. When it all ended, two young men were dead, and police had two more in custody as they try to sort out exactly what happened. A chaotic scene drew neighbors to the street as the sound of police sirens and helicopters replaced that of gunshots. I heard four shots and a pause and then like three or four more. Catherine Allington mistook the sound for construction, but nearby Fresno police officers knew exactly what it was. They rushed to the scene, found two men dead on the grass in front of an apartment complex, and got important clues almost immediately. And they received the information that somebody involved, possibly a shooter, was in one of the apartments where the de deceased males are laying. So the officers surrounded the apartment, and there was a male in there. We have him detained at this time. Investigators believe they got one shooter, but they also held another man for questioning. And as the rain picked up, they moved a possible murder weapon into evidence and tried to tie up the loose ends. It looks right now just preliminary. It looks like maybe a shootout back and forth, but we don't know the people that we have here, how they were involved. Police identified the victims as 19-year-old Willie Lee Ford and 18-year-old Denzel Ford. Their 17-year-old brother Benzo was killed in another shooting just three months ago, but police tell me the shootings are not related. Live in Northwest Fresno, Corin Hoggard, ABC 30 Action News.